everyone, this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore, and I have a, another box to share with you, and I know if you're a follower of mine, you've probably seen this box before, it looks familiar, but it is my flip top box, but I've had several people ask me to do one of these that will fit the post-it notes, the 3x3 three three post-it notes, and so this is the box. You can use this for candy also too. This one's larger than the last one that I did. And um, I thought this would be a perfect gift for a teacher. And I, I thought it was a great idea. So i sharing this with you today. And so when you open it up, you can fit the post-it notes in there. And you could pro I have three in here. You could probably fit one more in here. So it holds quite a few. So this is what I am sharing today, and it is made similar to the other one. It's just got different measurements. So let me go ahead and finish tying this back up, and we'll get started. So what for this one you're going to need is this is uh, cherry cobbler, and it's 6 and 1 8 by 6 and 1 8. Then you're going to need another piece that's 3 and 3 quarters by 8 and a half. A piece of uh, mat, and this is our designer series paper. This is the Daffodil Delight, and it's three and a half by three and a quarter. For the sentiment, I'm backing up the sentiment with some early espresso, and it's one and a quarter by three. And then for the sentiment, it's Whisper White, and it's one by two and three quarters. Then you're going to need two pieces, and I cut about ten inches, and this is our early espresso uh, seam bonding ribbon. And also I'm using the designer vintage faceted buttons for the flower. And you will need another scrap of um, designer series paper to create your flower. So let's go ahead and get started scoring these pieces here. And what we're going to do first is on this 6 and 1 8 by 6 and 1 8, we are going to score it 1 and a half, And we're going to score it 1 and a half all the way around. And on the other piece, we're going to score this one on the long side, and we're going to score it at three and a half, and then at five. And that's it for scoring. So let's go ahead, and I will sharpen all these score marks. What did I do with my bone folder? hidden under all this stuff I have on my bench. Okay, so now we're ready to cut this bottom piece for our box. And we're just cutting up this score mark to the first one. And then this score mark to the first. And then turn it all the way around and do this side exactly the same. So you're just creating flaps. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm using fast fuse on this part of the box. You can do that for this part. When we attach it to the box, you definitely want to use the sticky strip so it stays all together. Sometimes I do not, as you've seen before, I forget to do the little check mark, but I do love this fast fuse. It's been taking me a little while to get used to it, but I love it. It holds everything. So that is the box. Now we are ready to attach it to the bottom of this, um, the top of the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just grabbing a little fast fuse and I look to see where about the center is and I just put a little bit of fast fuse right here. I'll grab my ribbon, just lay it right in the center. 
and then I will attach this bottom and this is where I'm going to use my sticky strip because you definitely don't want it to fall apart if you're giving this to someone. Okay, so now we can attach it to the bottom of the box. What you want to make sure is that it's centered in the middle of this square. So you may have to look over it and make sure it is centered and you don't want to go over this line or your box won't close. And then just seal it down really good. And then we're uh, ready to decorate the top. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put another piece of um, either fast fuse or you can use also your snail for this part and you're going to center that and you need to put your other piece of ribbon on before you mat it. Do not forget that. I've done it before and I've forgotten to put that piece of ribbon there and then, then there's no way you can tie it closed. So I am going to use some snail for this. I like to use the fast fuse on this because it holds the ribbon really well. It is stronger than this snail. So we'll just mat that into in the center. And so you have your closure like that. Okay, so let's decorate the top. And I'm going to show you first, let me set this aside and show you how to do the flower. Now I'm using this blossom punch and you are going to need two pieces. And I'm just going to show you how to do this because they make really cute flowers. You can use them on cards and everything. So you just need two pieces. And usually what I do is I mix up in a bottle some alcohol and water. And the alcohol just makes it um, dry faster. Because if you're wanting to put it like on a box or something, it does take time to make and dry. In fact, I've made one ahead of time so that you don't have to sit and wait. You can use your um, hair dryer or your embossing um, tool to dry it to speed up the drying time if you like. But I just give it a couple squirts, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to mess up my mat here. <laughs> And then you just crinkle it all up. It'll crinkle really easily. And then you just unfold it and you can play with it. You can um, like curve the, the ends. You can do whatever you want. To, and that would be the bottom. And then for the top piece, I just cut one little petal off and do the exact same thing. You spray it, crinkle it all up, and then get a glue dot and you close it like that and then you can play with this part too and make it curve and then you're ready to attach it to this bottom part and that's what I did with this piece and you can see it looks kind of vintage and it's really really a cute flower and you can just while it's damp you can play with it and then just set it with your heat tool and then I'm gonna grab one of our these are our uh, designer vintage um, buttons and I'm going to put one of those in the center this larger one but first before I do that let's go ahead and put on our doily so I'm going to use one of our white tea lace doilies that Stampin' Up! has I'm going to make sure I just get one and I'm just going to cut this in half because I don't need the whole thing so you can you make two of them with one. And then I'm going to use some snail to attach it to the top. This you don't want to use your fast fuse because the fast fuse is really sticky and you don't want it to tear the doily because it is really delicate. So we're going to attach that there. And then let's go ahead and stamp the sentiment because I want to make sure before I put the flower on that the sentiment is centered right and everything. So I'm going to use some Early Espresso ink and the stamp set that I'm using 
This is one of the free stamp sets from our celebration. So if you spend $50, you can get this one free. And it's called Simply Wonderful. And if you saw my, my um, card tutorial that I made a card for my friend and it was a circle, I used these little, this little flower for that. So I've used this quite a bit. I've used this also. So it's a great little freebie if um, you want to get that before celebration ends on March 31st. I'm using the You're, You're the Best. I'm going to stamp that on this piece of Whisper White. And I hope I'm getting it centered because I can't look over it. And use some snail to attach it. And I'm going to attach this a little further down because I want this part to be underneath the flower. And I'll cut a little banner at the end. You don't have to do that, but I just thought it would add a little bit to it. And then we'll go ahead and put some more snail on that. And set that on here get our little flower and let's see I think I'll use some glue dots to attach the flower to the box so I'll put a few over here be generous with your glue dots because I wouldn't want it to fall off so I, I do use quite a few glue dots So let's put that right there and then put more glue dots on the back of your button. Again, be generous. I have had glue dots everywhere today. They've been sticking to me all over the place. And then we're going to go ahead and attach our button to the center. And so just fill it with your post-it notes and then tie it up with a little bow and then you are done. And it's super cute, really. I'm so thankful for, I, I know a few people have asked me for this, so thanks for the idea. And I'm sure everyone else will appreciate it too. So let's get this bow tied. And you see, you don't really need 10 inches probably. You can cut that those shorter. But you do want to make a pretty cute bow. And then just cut your little ends off. So that's it. Here's the other one that has the post-it notes in it. And I thought it would turn out really cute. And so that is it for today. So if every, anybody needs any supplies for this project, you can go to my blog at Stamping with Amore and order right from my shop on my blog and don't forget that celebration is still going on for every fifty dollars you spend you get um, a free product and Stampin' Up! has added new free product choices so they are amazing I'm going to be doing some cards using some of them um, I did post a card the other day on my blog using one of the other free stamp sets so check that out and um, so that's it <laughs> have nothing else to say I guess so everyone have a blessed day and I will see you next time bye